Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. So this is video number two of the build on my five axis CNC machine. I obviously didn't make these videos when I was building the machine. To be truthfully honest, I'm a hobbyist and I didn't even know if this thing would work when I was doing it. But in this video, I'd like to cover the kinematics. I believe I'm saying that correctly. The post processor and the controller that I used. I had a number of challenges with this and if you're trying to build a machine such as this on your own, uh, hopefully this video might help. So stay tuned. All right, let's start talking about kinematics. I apologize ahead of time. I'm trying to stay warm. It's only about 30 degrees in my shop this morning. I'm, uh, for those that are not aware, I'm, I'm located uh, just north of Atlanta, Georgia, and, and it is a chilly day for sure. And I can't run my heaters because, um, well, they look like this. And they make way too much noise when I'm trying to make a video. So uh, let's get with it. Uh, I don't know a lot about the kinematics math. I've actually watched some videos on it and to be perfectly honest with it, it's, uh, it's way above me, but I can tell you this much in a layman's term. It's basically the calculation of the spatial representation between A, B, and Z. So when you need to cut apart and it needs to be at this particular location, notice the head's pointed and this is slightly rotated, it's going to actually keep that uh, point uh, cutting along the line that's actually in the G-code file. The kinematics is actually done, the calculation is done in the post-processor and then the controller actually just takes that post-processor code and then uh, cuts out the part. The challenge we have, especially in these hobbyist machines, is you can't recalculate the, the kinematics uh, on the fly. So once you set the tool uh, length within the uh, program, you're not able to change it again. Now let me just kind of highlight that a little bit more. All right, so kinematics, and is it important to you? Well, it really depends. Uh, if you only plan on using one tool and cutting your whole part and never going back and making tool changes, then it's not so critical. You can actually use uh, a number of the controllers. You can use the mock controller, three or four, or the Masso unit without any problem. You just take the G-code, load it, and run it. The challenge becomes is if you need to make a tool change. Because what happens is you go in the post processor, in my case I'm using uh, Mastercam and Fusion 360, and you actually have to tell it um, the tool length. And the tool length in this case is really not this length here. The tool length is the articulation point because that's what it's going to use at the, in the math to actually determine where this, this spatial representation should be. Um, the other advantage of this particular machine is there's only one articulation point or one offset. Everything is, is perfectly parallel to the actual shaft itself. So the z-axis comes down to the middle point here and the a slash b comes right to that middle point. So this is the only articulation point the math has to take into consideration. So, if you, what I have to do is go in, and in my case, I set my tool length to 235 millimeters. So when I make a tool change right now, it's a bit of a pain. I actually have to come in here and use a caliper and say, okay, my tool length is this long. I've got this much articulation, so is that 235? The problem, obviously, is, is trying to get that right every single time. What most people would like to be able to do is use something like this, a touch-off plate, and be able to go, okay, now at the, the tool length is zero and, and use that offset. The problem is in, in Mach 3, Mach 4, and the master unit that I'm using, it is not able to redo those calculations. It's basically uh, a fixed length. Uh, even though it's taking that offset, um, it, doesn't, it isn't able to correct all those spatial geometries when it's going through all of the A and the B motion. Now, I'm told that, that the Linux CNC uh, does do that. However, um, I'll go over my controller here in a second and why I chose not to go the Linux CNC route and actually use the Masso unit. So, it's really not a huge, huge problem. Um, what I'm going to do is actually make a device that will actually, there's some holes up in here, so I'll make a, a nice uh, jig, if you will, that will actually hold the tool length to the certain the length that I need. So every time I can actually just place it in here and lock in the collar. Um, the uh, uh, it's just it's just a bit of time consuming and it's something you need to be con conscious of because if you just start going in and say oh I can just adjust the tool length um, in a five axis tool flow uh, using mock or, or masso you'll never be able to touch the part it'll touch the part sometimes and then it flies off and, and way off overcuts and undercuts and does all kinds of weird things so so hopefully that gives you some idea of the challenges that you'd run into it's really not a huge huge problem but it's something you really need to be conscious of. You're not going to be able to do a simple touch off. You're actually going to have to create some kind of jig so you can preserve this length, especially if you plan on using a mock or a Masso unit. So with that said, let's take a look at the controller. 
So here's the controller for the 5-axis CNC. The only thing that's not in frame is the VFD, which is actually in a different case. This, however, is not the first controller. The first controller was based on a mock setup. That would have been a Mach 3 that I had upgraded to a Mach 4 that was connected by Ethernet Smooth Stepper to a PDX board to a microdrive to the NEMA 34 motors. The problem with that setup was I was losing steps and I couldn't figure out why. I did a lot of research on the problem and there was really no conclusion as to what was ultimately causing it. There's a number of theories but really no conclusion. So I ended up ripping everything out and starting over and this is what I ended up with and I'm very happy with it today. But what were those conclusions? So let's start off with the Windows based machine. Mach runs on a Windows based machine and th that is not a real-time processing system. That is a parallel processing system, which means it can take other tasks. So their thought was that it, at, at the speeds that I'm running at, which are in excess of 5,000 millimeters a minute, that we actually could be introducing some latency and therefore it wasn't stopping in time, which would have caused loss of steps. The other problem was the drives themselves. So I was using NEMA 34s and stepper motors lose torque as they go faster. I didn't realize that at the time, um, but uh, doing some additional research, that's kind of what happened. Uh, so I switched those to ClearPass and this Masso unit. The Masso is very, very simple. There's no PC. Everything connects directly to it, making it very clean, very easy to troubleshoot. And then the ClearPath motors, um, which are also uh, very straightforward. They're in stepper mode, um, but they actually hold position no matter how fast you run them. So kind of let's go through what we got here. So at the top, you can see the two Gecko drives. Those are controlling the NEMA 23s, which are on the head unit. That's probably not a problem, given the fact that it runs really slowly. The Masso unit itself, um, then a power supply. The power supply is way overkill. That's actually left over from the original uh, configuration. And then the two uh, power supplies for the clear path drives. It's very straightforward, very easy to configure, very easy to maintain. Um, then you upload the, the uh, G code by USB drive. I would highly recommend this setup. It goes from 3-axis to 5-axis with a software configuration. Um, very straightforward and ultimately I think it's actually cheaper to run than, than having a PC and all the other parts and pieces. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. It's actually cold in here and I want to turn the heaters back on. Hopefully that answered some of the questions you might have had about how I made this machine or some of the conclusions I came to. If not, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. 